Mrs. Walker. How good of you to come at such short notice. I'm Edward Goff. How do you do? Uh, do sit down. Can I get you something? A cup of tea? No, thank you. You're not English? American. How very interesting. A cup of coffee, perhaps? <laughs> thank you, no. Well, now. Let me explain. I'm off to Italy very soon. I must get this matter settled as quickly as possible. You know the problem. Yes, I... Two small children, a boy and a girl, Miles and Flora. Well, not so small anymore. Eight and ten, my brother's children. He died two years ago. My brother and his wife both died in India. Typhoid, ghastly illness. Anyway, I'm their only living relative, thus... Guardian. The point is this, Mrs. Walker. They really are the most charming children. They couldn't be more so, but try as I may, and I really have tried hard. I'm just not the guardian type. Too, um, selfish, I suppose. Too impatient. A confirmed bachelor, as they say. Anyway. The children seem quite happy at Bly, so I think it's best if they stay there. Bly? My house in the country. Old family place, pleasant enough. I had a governess there for a while, but alas, she's no longer with us. Mrs. Gross, my housekeeper, has been doing her best, but... I need a governess who can take proper care of the children. Are you employed at present? No. No, sir. So when could you begin? Um, whenever you wish. Good. Excellent. Uh, may I see your references? Oh, dear. I'm so sorry. I, I'm, I'm afraid I don't have any. Um, why is that? Well, you see, I've never had to work before. I married when I was quite young, and my husband died, you see. Yes. Yes, I understand. This is really most unfortunate, Mrs. Walker. I was under the impression that you were an experienced and professional governess, but this puts me in a very difficult position. Please, sir. If you'll just give me a chance. I'm not afraid of working hard, and I'm devoted to children. My late husband was a schoolmaster, and I often helped him with the lessons. My experience may sound unconventional, but I'm sure you'll find my work more than satisfactory. Sit down, Mrs. Walker, and let me explain. This is no ordinary job. There is a special condition attached to it. A condition that makes it of the utmost importance that I employ somebody completely trustworthy and reliable. What is this condition? She must never trouble me with questions, complaints or problems. She must deal with everything herself. She will receive all necessary monies from my lawyer's office. Apart from this, she will have no connection with me whatsoever. The welfare and upbringing of the children will be entirely her responsibility. It's a heavy burden. It is a burden I would welcome. What do you mean? I have no children. I have longed for a family. So what you are suggesting to me would be the closest thing I could have to a family of my own. Mr. Goff, I would gladly give the children all my love and attention. Yes, Mrs. Walker. I believe you are sincere in what you say. I am, sir. Indeed, I am. <laughs> Perhaps I should take a chance. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, you won't regret it. I promise you that. I hope not. <laughs> Very well. Let's shake hands on it. Now, 
I think the children are very lucky to have such a charming and sympathetic young lady as their governess. Thank you. Thank you very much. Contact my solicitor. He'll make all the necessary arrangements. Oh, is there anything I should buy for the children? Any school books or anything of that sort? Oh, no, I don't think so. Your predecessor, Miss Jessel, made sure the children had everything they need. She was very efficient. If I may, why did she leave? Great sadness. She died. Mrs. Walker. Welcome to Bly. I'm Mrs. Gross. Mrs. Gross, a pleasure to meet you. And this is Flora. Hello, Flora. How do you do, Mrs. Walker? I'm so glad to see you. So very glad. I hope you had a good journey. Yes, thank you. I'll take these upstairs, shall I, Mom? Oh, yes, please, Luke. I'm sure you'd like some tea. You must be tired. It's a long way from London. <laughs> You're much younger than I thought you'd be. And much prettier. Oh, oh child, you mustn't say such things. Why not? It's not polite to make personal remarks. Why not? Come along now. Show Mrs. Walker the garden. It's such a beautiful afternoon. I thought we'd have our tea out of doors. Oh, what a lovely idea. Come with me, Mrs. Walker. I'll show you the way. Who's that? What, my dear? Oh, I, I thought I saw... What? Someone in the room. There's no one there. Must be your reflection. Yes, it must have been. This way, Mrs. Walker. brother. Will Miles be joining us for tea? He's away at school. He'll be home very soon. Not until the end of term. I didn't realize Miles was away at school. He's at St. Edmund's. His father went there and so did his uncle. And you Mr. Goff, the gentleman I met in London. That's right. He was once head boy, so we have high hopes for Master Miles. Do all American people speak like you? Uh, well, I suppose so. There are different dialects in different regions, just like there are here. Why did you come to England? Stop asking questions. Let Mrs. Walker enjoy the tea. The gardens are lovely. Is that a lake? Yes. Mrs. Walker. Pleased to meet you, Mom. Nice to meet you, Peggy. I'm showing Mrs. Walker all around the house. I'm sure you'll be very happy here. I'm sure I will, too. Come along, Mrs. Walker. There's an awful lot to oh. see. <laughs>
Walker all over the house. You must be exhausted. <laughs> I am. Hello, Barnaby. Miss Flora. She's the most beautiful child I've ever seen. Isn't she? Good as gold, too. Tragic about her parents. She must miss them very much. She never talks about them. Never. Neither of them do. Tell me about Miles. He's a lovely boy. Very good looking. Such charm. You'll be carried away by him. had any children of your own? No. I very much wanted to. <laughs> but it was not to be. Yes? Morning post has come. There's a letter for you, Mom. For me? From London. I read it's from the master. Thank you, Luke. I'm enclosing a letter from Miles' school. As you see, I haven't opened it. The headmaster's an awful bore, so please deal with this yourself. Mrs. Gross, I need to speak with you. Finish that later, Connie. Yes, ma'am. Is something wrong? Uh, this is a letter from Miles' headmaster. He's been dismissed from school. Dismissed? Expelled. They're sending him home. What? What's he done? They say he's a bad influence to the other boys. Master Miles, I don't believe it. Have you ever known him to be bad? Oh, just the usual boyish pranks. The school is talking about something far more serious. They say he's an injury to the others. Never. How dare they say such cruel things about a child. They're afraid he'll contaminate. Contaminate. Corrupt. Corrupt. Ah, you afraid he's going to corrupt you? Why do you say that? I was just joking. When's he coming home? Uh, tomorrow, on the 11 o'clock train. Miles? Are you sad to be leaving school? Hey, name is Mrs. Walker. I'm always happiest to fly. Won't you miss your friends? Why should I? I love Flora and Mrs. Gross and Luke and Barnaby and... and you, of course. I think we'll have the most tremendous fun. Don't you? Yes, Miles. I hope so. grotesque. What the headmaster said about Miles. You were quite right, Mrs. Gross. I don't believe a word of it. So, um, what will you do? Do? About the letter. What will you say to his uncle? Well, the boy is my responsibility. Those are the conditions of my employment, so I shall say nothing. Nothing? No. Nothing at all. Quite right, my dear. We will deal with this matter ourselves. Yes, Mrs. Gross, we will.
Dear sir, I have received your letter about Miles and your decision to expel him from school. It is not for me to question this decision, but I do feel you should have been more explicit as to the reasons why he was dismissed. You say that he was a corrupting and unwelcome influence on the other boys. This is a serious accusation, and I wish it had been supported by firm evidence. The experience of Mrs. Gross, the housekeeper at Bly, who has known Miles intimately for many years, suggests that you may be much mistaken. such fright. I'm sorry, Mrs. Walker. Mrs. Gross sent me to tell you that supper is ready. Thank you, Miles. I'll be with you in a moment. What are you doing today? Lessons this morning. Must we? I want two hours of lessons every day, even on the holidays. Quite right. What lessons are we having? Geography first, then French, a little piano practice. Then you can enjoy the rest of the day. That's a surprise this afternoon. Ash Flora. How exciting. Don't be too sure. Sometimes their idea of a surprise can be more of a shock. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not very good at games. My dear, now you're an English country governess in an English country house. You've got to learn to play cricket. so good with the children. Am I? They really like you. Oh, I do hope so. There was a time when I thought I'd never be this happy again. After your husband died. Was he American? No, English. He was a schoolmaster. Uh -oh. He came to America to write a book about the English that settled there. When he came to do research, that's how he met my father. Was he a schoolmaster too? No, a minister, oh. but a keen amateur historian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Being the youngest of four daughters, I think Papa was rather relieved when I decided to marry William. He brought me back to England, and for a time we were very happy. But we didn't have long together. Taken ill, was he? He was much older than me. Shame you didn't have any children. William's books were his children. Oh, goodness me. Six o'clock. Time for the children to have their bath. Miles! Laura! I think the children are very lucky to have such a charming and sympathetic young lady as their governess.
wonderful smell. <laughs> Steak and kidney pie. Master Miles paying for it. Sounds delicious. Peggy, there's no one else living here, is there? No one else. But no other man apart from Luke and Barnaby? No one else, no. I just saw someone standing on the old tower. Well, what was he like? Uh, youngish, I suppose. I couldn't see him clearly. Might have been one of Luke's friends from the village. Yes. Yes, perhaps. It's time we were going. I was hoping for a break in the clouds. I'm afraid it's set in for the day. Well, I think you're right. My, how smart you look. We're going to get awfully wet. My father used to say, the devil spends his Sundays making obstacles for the faithful. Now, come along. There's an umbrella each and it's not far. All right, Miss Walker. Oh, my gloves. I'm never done with them. Perhaps they're in your bedroom. Oh, no, I remember. What's wrong? You looked so pale in church, I thought you were going to faint. And you didn't eat any lunch. What is it? Just a headache. Try to get some sleep. That's the best thing. Mrs. Gross. When I went to get my gloves, I... I saw someone. Who? A man. Looking in the window. So, had you ever seen this man before? Yes, once on the old tower. The old tower. When was that? Yesterday, after we played cricket. What's he like? Like no one had ever seen before. He had long, curly, dark hair to his shoulders and cold. Piercing eyes. He almost didn't look real. Certainly no gentleman. How was he dressed? A black jacket uh, and vest. And a strangely sp spotted scarf around his neck. You know this man? Peter Quint. But it can't be. Why? He was, uh, Mr. Goff's valet. When the master went away, he left Quint in charge. And? 
He died. Peter Quint is dead. Mrs. Walker, come and look at my flowers. How beautiful. I'm collecting all the different flowers I can find in the garden. What a lovely idea. Then I shall ask Old Barnaby what the names are and write them underneath. Very good. Now, it's time you were asleep. So let's put this away, shall we? Flora, who's handwriting? You are nice, Mrs. Walker. And so are you. I hope you'll never go away. I won't, I promise. Sleep well. Don't forget to say your prayers. Good night. Good night. me good night. Now go to sleep. I will. I'm not asleep. Was that you playing the piano just now? Isn't it lovely? So sad. Well, it's time you were asleep. I like lying here in the darkness. The moonlight makes lovely patterns on the ceiling. And I can hear the animals and birds out in the garden. What animals and birds? The mysterious ones. The ones that only come out at night. That man, the man I saw standing in the window, at first I thought he was looking at me. He wasn't. He was looking into the room. He was looking for someone. Who could he be looking for? Miles. He was looking for Miles. What could this man possibly want with Master Miles? I don't know. I'm so afraid for the children. Did they ever talk to you about Quint and Miss Jessel? Possibly. I can't remember. They don't to me. They've never even mentioned their names. Don't you find that rather odd? Not especially. Children are like that. They live in the present. Were they very good friends? Quint and Miles? Oh, yes, very. They spent hours together. It was Quint's fancy to play with him. Spoil him. Did their uncle know about this? He doesn't like tale-telling. He hates complaints, and I didn't want to annoy him. Weren't you afraid of the effect he might have? Quint, I mean. Effect? On the children. They were in your charge. They were not, Mrs. Walker. Of course they were. The master put Quint in charge. 
He trusted him completely. Quint was in charge of the children? Quint was in charge of everything. How did he die? Barnaby found him at the foot of the old tower. There was ice everywhere. He must have slipped. And he'd been drinking, of course. Was Miles very upset? He's a brave little man. and keeps his feelings locked away inside. I'm going down to the lake with Flora. She wants to gather some more flowers for her book. Would you like to join us? No, thank you, Mrs. Walker. I think I'll stay here. Mrs. Walker, look at these. Yes, very nice. What is it, Mrs. Walker? It's almost time for lunch. We'd better go indoors. Isn't it wonderful by the lake? We love it here. We? Miles and me. It's a lovely day. Yes, it is. Let's hope it stays this way. Did Flora and Miss Jessel spend a lot of time together? Oh, yes. And Master Miles went off with Peter Quint. Miss Jessel would spend time with Flora. What did they do? Miss Jessel read her stories. I used to go for walks. Flora collected flowers for her. Down by the lake? Yes, they loved it there. What did she look like? Miss Jessel. Young and pretty. Quite like you. Taller, though. Long, dark hair. And, and sad, grey eyes, very slim. That's right. I saw her. You saw her? Just now. Flora was picking flowers. I, I looked up, and there she was, beneath the trees, gazing at the child. But she's dead. And so is Peter Quint. Dear, dear. We must try to keep our heads. But I saw her, Mrs. Gross. I swear to you. She just fixed on the child. 
And she looked at her with a... What? I can't describe it. With a, a dreadful determination. And Flora saw her, too. You saw a shadow beneath the trees. Mrs. Grove, Mrs. Walker, time for lunch. Mrs. Walker, I strongly advise you keep this nonsense from the children. It'll only give them nightmares. Tell me how she died. She drowned. They found her in the lake. been here, Peggy? A blight. Twelve years last Easter. So you've known the children a long time. <laughs> Ever since they were born, bless their hearts. Even when their parents were alive, they often came down for a few days. It was such a treat, having children in the house. Have you noticed any change in them? Change? What sort of change? Oh, I don't know. I was just wondering. They're older, of course, and... Uh... And bigger. <laughs> but they're still the same as ever. Two little angels. Was Peter Quint fond of the children? Peter Quint? He liked them well enough. Mrs. Gross said that Miles and Peter Quint used to spend a lot of time together. She's right, they did. Too much time, if you ask me. Why do you say that? He was a rough sort of fellow. It wasn't good that Master Miles spent so much time with him. Why didn't Miss Jessel put an end to it? <laughs> she wouldn't, would she? What do you mean? She didn't like making trouble. And she was afraid of Peter Quint. Were you afraid of him? We all were. What happened to Peter Quinn? Didn't Mrs. Gross tell you? She told me he died. So he did. He fell down the tower steps? So he did. If you know all about it, why ask me? She told me you found him. I did. It must have been dreadful for you. It was like a breath of fresh air after some foul pestilence. God struck him down, ma'am. It were a judgment. Anyway, it's all in the past now. Dead and buried like Peter Quint. Today, we're going to start reading a play by William Shakespeare, a man many people regard as the greatest of all English poets and playwrights. It's a very exciting play about a young prince who believes his father has been murdered. The prince is called Hamlet, and the play is named after him. Have you heard of it? Uncle Edward often goes to the theatre. Does he? He likes the music hall best, not plays. Well, I'm sure he'd love this play. It's much admired. Now, let me tell you the story, and then we'll read a few of the speeches. It starts in the great castle where the prince lives. Some of the prince's friends have seen his father's ghost, and that's how they learn that he's been murdered. Tell me, Miles, do you believe in ghosts? Do you, Mrs. Hooker? I'd like to know what you think, please. It's much more interesting for us to know what you think. I don't have an opinion. Then it can't be very important, can it? Besides, it's only a play. It's not real life after all.
Oh, Connie, you startled me. How are you, ma'am? I saw the door was open. I thought it might be the children. They're not allowed in here. Why not? Mrs. Gross doesn't like it. Was this Peter Quint's room? Yes, ma'am. Why has nothing been cleared away? I've no idea, ma'am. You best ask Mrs. Gross. Did Miss Jessel die soon after Peter Quint? Yes. Two or three days, that's all. They say she drowned herself. Yeah. She died for love. Poor Miss Jessel. What happened? She wouldn't eat. She wouldn't sleep. She wouldn't speak to anyone. She sat alone in the schoolroom all by herself playing the piano. The same sad little tune over and over again. Do, do, do. What are you doing here, Connie? Get back to your work. Yes, Miss Gross. Sorry, Miss Gross. It's my fault. I kept her here. You've been asking her questions about Miss Jessel. It was just casual conversation. It didn't sound very casual to me. And you've been talking to Peggy and Barnaby, asking them about Peter Quint. Is there any reason why I shouldn't? It upsets people. And it's none of your business. It most certainly is my business if it affects the children. All this talk of dead people is not good for them. I have not spoken to Miles and Flora of these things. Not yet. You know perfectly well I would never do or say anything to upset the children. Mrs. Walker, I've had children. They're grown up, happy and healthy. You've had none. Let me be the judge of what's right and wrong in this house. Please leave this room as you found it. And remember to close the door behind you when you leave. What are you looking for? I heard someone talking. I was telling her a story. The story of a great, big, grizzly bear. This is no time for stories. It's very late. Come along, Flora. I'll take you to your own room. Can't I stay here? Certainly not. Go to sleep, Miles. Good night, Mrs. Walker. Good night. Good night, Miles. Good night, Flora. Now, go to bed. I will. No more nasty dreams. Good night, Mrs. Walker. Good night, Flora.
say, Mrs. Walker? Do you ever write to my uncle? Well, there wouldn't be much point, would there? He's traveling in Italy. Is that what he told you? Yes. That's typical of Uncle Edward. He's always saying things like that. What do you mean? He pretends to be away, so we didn't bother him with our problems. You mean he's not in Italy? Perhaps he is, perhaps he isn't. I wouldn't know. I wonder if my uncle thinks what you think. How do you know what I think? I don't, of course. You never tell me. But does he know? Know what, Miles? What's happening at Bly? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Oh, I think you do. Miles. Miles, please. Tell me what you mean. I wonder if he knows how bad I am. But you're not bad. Aren't I? No. You're very good. Some people are bad, you know. Come along. We must keep the parson waiting. Yeah. <sighs> 
Laura? Who is it? Who do you see? Miles? Miles! What are you doing? <laughs> it's not funny, Miles. Stop it! Stop laughing! Miles, stop it! Stop laughing, Miles! Go to bed. At once! Stop laughing, Miles. Look at me and tell me the truth. What were you looking at in the garden? Nobody. Then what were you doing down there? If I tell you, will you promise to understand? Yes. Yes, I will try. I went out there so that you would do this. Do what? You're always saying how good I am. Now, think of me for a change. That's bad. When did you go down to the garden? At midnight. How could you be sure that I would know it? I arranged it with Flora. She banged on the door to wake you up. The two of you planned it together? Of course. She woke you up, she looked out of the window, you looked out too, and saw me. I fell into a trap. Yes. <laughs> Very naughty, Miles. You could have got your death in the night air. I want you to be bad. Really bad. <laughs> and so you were. Now go to sleep. Don't be afraid. I won't leave. I promise I won't. You're sweet, Flora. Mr. 
Mrs. Gross, I want you to tell me everything. Everything? About Peter Quint and Miss Jessel. He was the master's valet. She was the governess. It is our duty to protect the children. You must help me. Stop this. Stop this nonsense at once. I tried to run away this morning. What do you mean? I felt I could stay here no longer. I started to pack my bag. But I couldn't do it. I couldn't because of the children. Please, Mrs. Gross, just try to believe me. If not for my sake, then for the children. I know you think I've gone mad. It's a wonder I'm not. There they are. Come here, Mrs. Gross. He's not reading to her. They're talking of things they've seen, of things they've shared with them. Mrs. Gross, please, come look at them. I believe they meet Miles and Flora Quint and Jessel. They meet and share terrible secrets. The more I watch them, the more sure I am of it. Don't you see? They're not ours. At this moment, they're his and they're hers. Quint and Miss Jessel. Yes. They want to possess them completely. Whatever for? For the love of all that is evil and depraved. But how can they do that? By corrupting them, as Quint corrupted Miss Jessel. The children will perpetuate their evil. But Quint and Miss Jessel are dead. Whatever they may have done has died with them. No, Mrs. Gross, it has not. They can reach out from beyond the grave. I've seen them. Their evil is more powerful now than it was when they were alive. This woman you saw, she was all in black, you say? Yes. Yes, and she had an extraordinary beauty. Yes, she was beautiful, Miss Jessel. She was a lady, not like him. He was a monster. He did what he wished, whatever he wished. With her? With them all. The children? Oh, no. Not even Peter Quint would do a thing like that. I've looked into those eyes, Mrs. Gross. That man is capable of anything. What are we going to do? I shall send for their uncle. He must be informed. He must come here and see for himself what is going on. You write a letter. This very evening. Why don't you come in? How did you know I was there? I heard you. The floorboards creak so, and I could hear the rustle of your skirts. Why aren't you asleep? I like to lie awake and think. And what do you think about? Why, you, of course, dear Mrs. Walker. 
I'd rather you went to sleep. And I think of this queer business of ours. What queer business, Miles? Oh, you know, you know. Is there something you want to tell me? Should there be? You've never said a word to me about your school. Never mentioned it in any way. Haven't I? No, never. From the hour you came back. You've never talked about the masters, or your friends, or what happened. Do you want to tell me about it? Have you told my uncle that I was expelled? No, but I am going to. When? I've just started a letter to him. Well, then finish it. I shall. You'll have a tremendous lot to tell him. And so will you. A tremendous lot. There are many things he'll ask you. Very likely. What things? Things you've never told me. About what happened before you came back. Before you went away. What happened? Oh, Miles. Dear, sweet Miles. And I so want to help you. I would rather die than do you wrong or hurt you. You must know that. But you must help me. You must tell me. Then I can help you. Then I can save you. What was that? It was me. I blew the candle out. Miles? I've been practicing the piano. I can play the Mozart's Allegro almost perfectly. Do listen. Good miles. What's the matter? Did I play a wrong note? Where's Flora? I have no idea. <laughs> She was with you. No, she's not. She must be in her room. She's not there either. She's gone out. She's with her. Quickly, Mrs. Gross, we must find them. The children have been very clever. Miles played the piano to keep me quiet while she ran off. Connie. Yes, ma'am. Tell Luke to take this to the post. Where do you think she is? She'll have gone back to where we were the other day. There she is.
Laura, why aren't you wearing your coat? Why aren't you? Where's Miles? Where's Miss Jessel? She's there. Look, she's there. You see her, don't you? Tell me that you see her, because I know that you do. You're gathering those flowers for her, aren't you? Aren't you? Don't you see her? She's over there. Look, she's as big as a blazing fire. Look. There's nobody there. How can you see poor Miss Jessel? She's dead. No. No. This is all a terrible mistake. Flora, let's go back. No. Flora! Tell her the truth. I don't know what you mean. I see nobody. I see nothing. I never have. I think you're cruel. I oh, hate Flora. you. No, please. Don't do this. Please, I beg you. Don't do what they want. Just tell me that you see her. Look out there. Tell me. Tell me that you see her. Tell me! Take me away from her. Take me away. Take me away. How is she? Sleeping at last. She's been awake all night with a delirious fever. She'll never speak to me again. Indeed. I think she will not. Mrs. Gross, you must take her away. Once she leaves Bly, she'll recover. Perhaps I could take her to her uncle's. Yes. Yes, that would be best. Master Miles, too. No. No, not Miles. Leave him here. Why? Because he alone can rid this house of its evil by confessing everything he knows about Quint and Miss Jessel. The other night in his bedroom, he almost did. He wants to tell me. I'm sure of it. Perhaps I do believe you. What Miss Flora said in her delirium. Did she speak of them? No. But the profanity, the vile, unholy language she used. Where could a little child learn of such things? Go and get ready, Mrs. Gross. You must leave as quickly as possible. What shall I say to the master? Don't worry. My letter will have reached him. No, it won't. Connie said Luke couldn't find the letter. He looked everywhere. Miles, you must go quickly. Go and get Flora. I'll tell Luke to fetch the carriage. Right, Miss Flora, will you please come out? Stop it! 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 Stop Oh, look after her, Mrs. Gross. No, Where's no. me bag? It's behind the box now. Come along. Come on. Come on.
I say, how is Flora? Is she very ill? She'll be better soon. London will do her good. Being at Bly didn't agree with her. Do help yourself to some food, Miles. There's cold meat and salad. I've told the servants to leave us alone this evening. Did Bly disagree with her? Suddenly, all at once? Not as suddenly as you might think. I had seen it coming on. Then why didn't you send her away before? Before what? Before she became too ill to travel. She's not too ill to travel. She might have become so had she stayed. So, we're alone in the house? Yes, more or less. Not absolutely. We shouldn't like that. No, I suppose we shouldn't. Of course. You've got the others. Yes. The others. But they don't count much, do they? Depends on what you mean by much. Yes. It all depends. Well, I'm glad Bly agrees with me. Do you like it? Not tremendously. <laughs> then why do you stay? Because of you. Because of me. That shouldn't surprise you. Don't you remember the night of the storm? I came and sat on your bed. I told you there's nothing in the world I wouldn't do for you. Yes. Yes, I remember. I mean it, Miles. There's nothing I wouldn't do to help you. But you have to help me. I can't do this without you. What do you want me to do? Tell the truth. It's as simple as that. The truth about what? Everything. Everything? Tell the truth. And there'll be nothing to fear. Do you understand? Will you do it, Miles? Will you? I'll try. Good. But not now. Why not? I can't. Miles, you must. Miles, 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 you must. Please, please, Miles, just try. Just try. Please, please, just try. Look at me, look at me, and just try. Please, 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 just try. Yes, good, good boy, good boy. Now let's just start with something easy, shall we? Something that's just, just concerns the two of us. Miles, Miles, tell me. Yesterday afternoon, the table in the hall, did you take my letter? Did you? Did you? Yes, I took it. Why did you take it? You, you said about me. What did you think I'd say? I don't know. I don't know! Uh, was it something about them? I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. Of course you do. I don't. I don't! Miles, what did you do with the letter? I burned it. Is that what you did in school? Did you take letters or other things? I didn't steal. What did you do? Well, I said things. To other boys? To everyone? No. I mean you. Those I liked. And what did they say? Did they repeat what you said? Yes, they must have done. To those they liked. And these things came round? Yes, to the masters. Yes. And what were these things? I can't tell you. You must. I can't! Miles, things he taught you? Things you saw them doing? Things you did together? Miles, you must tell me. Miles, tell me! <laughs> Keep away from him. Keep away! 
Miles. Miles, speak his name. Miles. Do what I say, Miles, and speak his name. Oh, Miles. Speak his name. Miles, speak his name. Oh, Miles. Save your soul and speak his name. Say it. Miles. Speak his name. Speak his name. Say it, Miles. Say it. Say it. Clean up, wait, you devil! You're free of him. You're safe at last, my darling boy. You're safe. Miles. Miles. What is it? Miles. Oh, Miles.